So I recently did a few videos going over the curriculum that the Odin project offers. I did one on the foundation section and I did one on the full stack JavaScript section and enough people have asked for the full stack Ruby on Rails section and that's why I'm making this video. So in this video, I'm briefly just gonna cover everything that they offer in the Ruby on Rails section and kind of just go over what they have in there for people who are interested in learning Ruby on Rails through the Odin project. If you're not familiar with the Odin project, the Odin project is a 100% free online learning resource for web development. They cover Ruby on Rails, they cover JavaScript, and they cover web development foundations, which is a lot of basic HTML, CSS, and just a general curriculum covering pretty much all the basics for web development and whatnot. If you are interested in learning Ruby on Rails development, the Odin project is a great resource for that. It actually first started off as a Ruby on Rails resource and they've branched out since and now they have the full stack JavaScript section. But in the Ruby on Rails section, they cover you know a whole section on just Ruby and the Ruby programming language. In that section, they're gonna kind of just give you a Overall, what this course is gonna be like, they're gonna tell you how to install Ruby on your local machine. Then they're gonna cover some of the Ruby basics. They're gonna go over basic data types, variables, input, output, conditional logic, loops, arrays, hashes, methods, and a few other things here. I'll go ahead and click on one of the sections of this curriculum just so you can get an idea of what it's structured like and more or less how they're gonna be teaching you. In most of their curriculum, they're gonna go over a lot of things and teach you a lot of stuff. And you'll have different areas to learn from. They don't really just focus all of the learning on their website. They kinda of have you go out and learn from different resources online. And that's one thing that I do like and appreciate about the Odin project because I always say that that feels very real to how you're gonna be doing it on your day-to-day -day job as a, as a regular developer because that's what we do. We kind of get our information from multiple places. So you'll see how it's structured. There'll, there, there'll be a lot of reading and then they're usually gonna refer you to other links and other places such as videos and blogs and documentation to help you understand what, what it is they're trying to cover in certain sections. And for the most part, you can see here that they're talking a lot about logical conditions and basically just going over the basics of logical conditions, what if else statements are and whatnot in Ruby. And as you can see, they cover a lot of stuff in this particular section and they're just giving you all the basics of conditional logic inside of Ruby. And we'll just skip to the bottom and see that they have an assignment for you to go ahead and read Flow Control, a chapter in Launches School, an introduction to programming with Ruby. And then they have you go over to another section and have you read an article there. Then they provide you additional resources where you can continue to learn about this topic that they covered in this particular section. And like I said, this is how most of the Odin Project's curriculum is gonna be. This is pretty much the standard of their structure for their curriculum and how they kind of teach you in the Odin project. After you do a few of the sections here, most of the time you're going to get projects because the Odin project is project-based learning, just like Free Code Camp is. And I always say that project-based learning is the best way to learn because after you go through a lot of the stuff that they teach you, they're gonna have you actually build projects. And here you can see they have the whole section for their basic Ruby projects. They have you build a Caesar cipher. They have you do a project called substrings and then they have a stock picker project, and then they have you do a bubble sort, um, which is a basic algorithm, probably one of the, the most basic algorithms that most people are gonna learn as their first algorithm. And then they go into a lot of the object-oriented programming basics. They cover what object-oriented programming is, and then they have you build a couple projects such as tic-tac-toe and then a project called Mastermind. Then they continue to go into more sections you see they have files and serialization. Then they have different projects for that. Um, the Odin project is very, very dense with projects. They, they're they gonna have you building a lot of stuff and that's where all the learning's gonna happen. So as I tell people in the other videos where I go over this stuff, if you're skipping the projects, you're doing it wrong, you have to make sure that you do the projects. You have to make sure that you, you struggle through this stuff because if you just do the curriculum and if you just read the stuff that they teach you, that's fine and you'll learn a bit, but you're gonna miss out a lot if you skip the projects. So make sure that you stick with the projects and you do all of them 
and that's where you're going to learn the most. It's going to be hard. It's going to suck sometimes and you're going to feel like you don't know anything, but that's perfectly normal. As you continue working through a lot of these projects, you'll get better and things will get a little bit easier and then you'll come across challenges that you've never seen before and it's going to feel almost impossible, but it's okay to Google stuff. It's okay to look for the answer. It's okay to figure it out as you go because that's how you're going to learn the best. And we'll just keep going. They, they, cover a bit of the basics of computer science. They have an intro to computer science here. They talk about recursive methods. Then they have a project teaching you recursion. Then they have some data structures and algorithms. Then they have you do some projects for different types of data structures and algorithms such as linked lists and binary tree searches. And moving on, you'll see that they cover testing in Ruby and using R spec, which is I'm assuming a Ruby testing library that is common. I don't know Ruby very well, but I'm assuming if they're teaching it here, it's probably one of the more common testing libraries for Ruby. You'll see that they talk about test driven development. They introduce you to RSpec and then they have you build a project where you test your Ruby code. And then they cover a little bit of Git. They cover some Git in the basics on the foundation section. They're obviously going into Git a little bit more. In the foundation section, they have you install Git on your local machine and then they have you create a GitHub account because they want you committing your code as you work through this curriculum, which is a great way to build up your GitHub portfolio and it's a great way to understand how to use Git because Git is a source control tool that is used by many, many, many employers out there and it's just something good for you to learn from the very start and it's good for you to build your GitHub portfolio along the way as you're learning. Then they wrap up the Ruby section. They have their final Ruby project here and then they kind of have a conclusion for the Ruby programming language section. Moving on, we'll go back to the, to the full stack Ruby on Rails section where the next thing that they're gonna be teaching you about is databases. It looks like there's only three lessons here and they briefly just talk about databases. They talk about databases with SQL and then they have a project called SQL, which I'm assuming is just you building some things with SQL or querying a database using SQL and whatnot. And again, I don't wanna get too hung up on this. I wanna kinda of make this a little bit quicker. I feel like the other ones may have been a little bit longer. I'm not gonna click on every single lesson that they offer because I think just a high level overview is the best way to go about this. To, so then you kinda of get a good idea of what they offer and if you are interested in it, then you can go and check it out for yourself. And then they go into Ruby on Rails. Ruby on Rails is the framework that uses Ruby and it was a very popular framework about four or five years ago when I first started learning how to code. And I know a lot of companies still use it. And if you're interested in getting a job in Ruby on Rails or interested in learning Ruby on Rails, I would probably check around in the area that you're gonna to wanna to get employed in to make sure that it's in demand because if you're trying to get hired as a developer, I don't think that you should spend too much time on a technology that may not be in demand because it might be a lot harder for you to get a job, especially when you're first starting out. Because if you're first coming into it and it's not in very high demand, it may be harder for you to get a job. I think it's better for you to learn something that's in more demand if your main focus is trying to get a software developer job. So make sure you just check online and see what the demand for Ruby on Rails developers are in your area. So moving on, we'll see what they cover in the Ruby on Rails section. Um, in the intro, they go over what the course is gonna be like, they talk, they talk about preparing you for development and then they have you install Rails on your local machine just like they did with the Ruby section. Uh, now they're gonna have you install Rails that works with Ruby. So installing Ruby is a prerequisite to installing Rails. So don't skip the Ruby section and come to the Ruby on Rails section first because you'll probably have to go back and install and go over all the Ruby stuff because that's the primary programming language that Ruby on Rails uses, hence the name, right? Um, so then they cover some of the Rails basics. They kinda talk about routing, controllers, views. Ruby on Rails uses the MVC pattern, which is model view controller, and they kinda talk about what some of those things are. Then they go over the asset pipeline, they talk about Webpacker and development, and then they have you build a blog as your first project in Ruby on Rails. And then they continue with active records basics. I'm not really sure what active records are. I don't know if that's something that's specific to Ruby on Rails, but um, I believe it is. It's not terminology that I've heard of before. It might just be something that I'm not familiar with. But then they talk about what that is and they have you build something with active record. 
and then they get into forms and authentication. They go over some form basics. They have you build some forms as a project. Then they talk about sessions and cookies and authentication. And then they have an authentication project, which I'm assuming is going to teach you a little bit about authentication. Right. Um, then they get into more advanced forms and active record. Again, they talk about active record queries, active record associations. Then they have you build a project for associations and they get into callbacks and advanced forms. And then they have you build a project for building advanced forms. And then they get into APIs. They teach you about APIs and building your own API with Ruby on Rails. They talk about working with external APIs and then it looks like they have you build a couple of APIs yourself and use an API for the last project in the API section. Moving on to the next thing after APIs, you're gonna have mailers and advanced topics here. In the advanced topics, they're gonna go over mailers, they're gonna cover a project that has you sending confirmation emails, they're gonna get into advanced topics, which I'm not really sure what, what the advanced topics are, but I'm assuming that if you've made it this far into the program and the curriculum, that you're pretty deep into Ruby on Rails and whatever they're teaching you is probably appropriate to be called advanced topics. They cover some web sockets and some actionables, and then they have you build their final project, and then you have your conclusion, which will wrap up the Ruby on Rails section for the full stack Ruby on Rails curriculum on the Odin project. And then after that, they're gonna cover HTML, CSS, they're gonna cover JavaScript, and they're gonna cover the getting hired section. These three sections here are the same for the full stack Ruby on Rails section as they are for the full stack JavaScript section. If you want, I'll go ahead and show you that in the full stack JavaScript section, if you choose to go through that path, they're gonna cover the same 40 lessons of JavaScript here. They're gonna cover the same 30 lessons of HTML and CSS. And at the bottom, you're gonna see that they have the getting hired section here. That's gonna be the same in the Ruby on Rails full stack stuff as it is in the JavaScript full stack stuff. The only difference in the JavaScript stuff, they're gonna teach you about Node.js and that's really the only difference. They just have a section covering Node.js for the backend JavaScript stuff. So on the full stack Ruby on Rails stuff, you're gonna have the HTML and CSS, you're gonna have the JavaScript, and you're gonna have the getting hired stuff. I'll briefly go over this. Um, I went through all this stuff on the full stack JavaScript stuff, so I feel that it's a, like I'm just kind of repeating myself, but if you're interested in the Ruby on Rails stuff, I don't expect you to see the JavaScript stuff, so I'll just cover this briefly. And in the HTML and CSS, when you do the foundation section, which is a prerequisite to the, both of their full stack curriculum programs, that covers a lot of the basic HTML and CSS stuff. When you get into the HTML and CSS stuff inside their full stack projects, it's more focused around a little bit more advanced HTML and CSS and and just covers more in-depth topics from HTML and CSS than what they do in the foundation section. And here they go over HTML page structure, they go over displaying and inputting data, and they cover CSS, they cover the box model, floats positioning, flex box and grid, and a lot of different stuff. Again, with the foundation section, the first thing they have you do is actually go over to Free Code Camp and do their responsive web design section, which covers a lot of all of this stuff here, HTML, CSS, Flexbox, Grid, and a lot of other stuff that is very valuable for you to learn. Then they get into a little bit of design and UX. They get into responsive design and CSS frameworks here, and then they're gonna get into some advanced CSS topics, and that's gonna pretty much be the HTML and CSS section for the Odin project. And then the JavaScript section on the Odin project for the full stack Ruby on Rails curriculum is gonna be the same as the other JavaScript section in the full stack JavaScript section. And they're gonna briefly cover what JavaScript is. They're gonna talk about um, objects and constructors. They're gonna talk about, they're gonna have you build a library project. They're gonna teach you about functions and modules. And they're gonna have you build more projects such as tic-tac-toe. They're gonna cover classes and ES6 modules and keep on building more projects. They're gonna cover more object-oriented stuff. They cover some of that in the Ruby stuff, but they're gonna cover more of it here in the JavaScript stuff. They're gonna talk about JavaScript in the real world. They're gonna cover linting, and they're gonna cover forms and Webpack and different versions of ES. They're gonna cover asynchronous JavaScript and APIs and working with JSON and async 
and working with different APIs and async and await. They're going to have you build a weather app. They're going to cover a lot of React JS stuff here, and they're going to teach you a lot about the React library. And then they're going to talk a little bit about testing JavaScript and working with JavaScript on the back end. They talk about um, using Ruby on Rails or back end as a service for your back end. So it really, if, if, if you're on the Ruby on Rails full stack stuff, then you're gonna probably be using Ruby on Rails. They have you build another project, where's Waldo? And then they have you finish up that section with the final JavaScript project. And then the last part is gonna be the getting hired section, which is gonna talk a lot about preparing you for the job search and getting your personal website ready, getting your resume ready, applying for jobs, and the steps that you need to go through for getting ready for an interview and getting ready to be hireable. Again, the Odin Project and Free Code Camp both focus around getting you hired. They both focus around getting you a job. Their main goal is to get you working in a way that will get you familiar with being a developer in the real world and get you being marketable to employers. And that's why they both have sections that covered getting hired. I honestly think that if you're on the job hunt doing the getting hired section here and doing all the getting hired stuff on free code camp is a great way to just get job ready. So if you've already been learning quite a bit and you feel that you maybe don't want to learn Ruby on rails, or you don't want to go through the curriculum that they have to offer here, but you're like applying for jobs and, and going down that road already, you should check out the getting hired section here and you just check out all the employment stuff that they offer at free code camp. And if you want to see more on the HTML, JavaScript, and getting hired section, I kind of covered that a little bit more in the full stack JavaScript stuff. I'm briefly going over it quickly here because I feel that I don't know how many people really wanted me to do the Ruby stuff. I know a few people asked for it, and I figured that if a few people are asking for it, I might as well make it. And I that's pretty much it. That covers everything that they have to offer in the full stack Ruby on Rails section for the Odin project. Again, I think that both the Odin Project and Free Code Camp are excellent resources that are well structured and set up to get you a job as a web developer, as a full stack developer, as a front end developer. The curriculum that they have is just awesome and it's free, 100% free, no strings attached. You, you don't have to pay a thing. And that's why I always recommend them to people who are looking to learn how to code and try to get a job as a web developer. With all that said, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, make sure to hit that like button, drop a comment down below if there's any other curriculum that you want me to cover like this, and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos on me talking about learning how to code or tips and tricks and motivation for people who are trying to become self-taught programmers and get a job as a developer. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.